Alright. So, this is my next video. I was doing some modifier sack stuff. I didn't like how it turned out and it didn't come out very nicely. So, what I'm going to try to do right now is I'm going to show you how to create seams nicely in uh, seams nicely in with cloth and then kind of have a flap in the wind. I haven't done this yet, but I'm hoping it works out fine. Uh, yeah. So, let's see if this works out. So, first, what we're going to do is stop playing around and go customize unit setup make sure it's inches uh, the rendering engine doesn't matter but that's fine so what we're next going to do is set up our scene ready for our uh, ready for our cloth and stuff so we'll put a sphere in there this will be like just a base sphere for our cloth to kind of attach to with a 12 radius 36, 32 segments is fine and I'll zero it out Next, what we're going to do is go under our splines, create a rectangle, and create a rectangle about, uh, about 40 by 40. Nah, 25 by 25. By 25. And we'll zoom in on that. And now we'll put a corner radius onto it. About 5. There we go. And convert that to an little spline. We'll see our polygons, or, or uh, these, our vertices, we can see them there. Uh, next, what we're going to do is add a garment maker to this. And as you can see, there is a garment maker. Uh, from seams and stuff, you got panels and seams. So what we're going to do, that's just to show you how to do it. We do need two of these, so we're going to drag and drop this out. There's a copy, and attach it to that one. Now we're going to add a garment maker. So we have two of it, so we'll go into panels. This is putting one on the bottom, rotate by 180 degrees. 180 degrees, and slide underneath. Now this is what was giving me trouble before. Don't know why. So I go seams, select one of my seams, select my next one of my seams, and I'm saying my topology is wrong. It still feels like that. So maybe make multi make multi segments. Break multi seconds. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'll be right back quickly. So I think I figured out my props. Let's redo this. Make your rectangles at 25 and 25. Something like that. And I'll create a bit this to a little spline for these vertices. And chamfer them. Them by not that much. By about yeah. I don't know. I literally just put in and then it just yeah, it didn't stop. So just put a value in there. I put one in. Seems work fine. Uh, next what we're gonna do is select all these vertices and convert them to corners. And now this should work. So drag and drop another one over there. Create a line between. Or actually, attach these two things, and then go. Uh, maker, right there. Now we'll put one panel underneath the other. So just like any panel, rotate by 180 and drop it beneath this other one. Now let's go seams. No, it's still not going to work. Oh my god, this is annoying. So I figured out why my stuff wasn't working. What I wasn't doing is, these things were all still together. What we need to do is break them apart so each scene, so each one of them can be moved independently. See? It's broken apart. It should be moving independently. Uh, first tip into linear, break it. It should work. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, that one's moving independently. This one's this one's moving independently and stuff like that. That is what we need to make the garment maker work properly with it seems. So let's go panels. Rotate that by 180. Drop that beneath it. Now, hopefully this works. Now it seems, yes, it looks like it will. And as you see, there's my seam. It is created. But I don't want that right now like that. I want it to be over here 
on either side of this uh, sphere. Actually, I'm just going to pull the sphere in between these two things. A little bit of both. So this will move over. Then we'll take one panel above. Two right there, one panel below, two over right here. Just kind of eyeball it. And then we'll select our sphere and make it smaller until it rests nicely just sitting in between these two things. So there we go. And move it over. Now let's go to the top view. Kind of see the just eyeball the center of this because this is all going to be dynamically created afterwards. So here we go. Now let's go to our seams again. Go to our seams again. Select these two seams. Create seam. As you can see, this one cut over itself again. This is nothing to worry about. It just hit reverse seam, and you will get these things again. Like you'll get the seams back to the normal size. Do that again. Create seam. That looks good. For these ones. Just hold down control to select both seams. Create seam. That one's screwed up, so we'll reverse that seam. These two. Create seam. And now we want these ones. These little side ones that we can see here. Create seam. That works well. Create seam. And as you can see, that break that we do to the vertices is very important. I don't know why. I'm assuming it's because we can only do seams of one like angle, so yeah. Or of one uh, I guess orientation, so we can't do all four or all three dimensions. Now we have those set up. So that is good. We finally have that set up, let's hit the cloth modifier on it. Actually let's select both of these things and hit cloth. Because we're gonna be using the same cloth modifier for both. So out of your properties under our rectangles, which is our uh, seams, we'll go under cloth and hit cashmere. Under our sphere, we'll hit the collision object, press OK. And let's see if we simulate local. You can see the seams pull together and it wraps itself nicely around our uh, sphere. I don't really like, I want the sphere to be smaller so it wraps around nicer. So, what I'm going to do is undo that by pressing Ctrl Z after I turn off simulate local. Bring this down to about 75% of its original size and then simulate local again. And as you can see, we have some nice. Uh, Plus there, it just kind of draped itself over. There is a bit of breaking over here, but I mean it's single sided, so once we add a shell modifier to that, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. And we'll drop some other Lego and turn the damp silicone simulation just for a bit of more fine tuning stuff. And now, what we're going to do is throw in a force on this. I've never actually done this, so let's do it. But I do know it works. So let's put some wind in the scene. Drag out a wind and rotate 90 degrees, just kind of in whatever direction you want your wind to come from. So we'll say wind come from there at 1, at uh, velocity of 1, basis unit. Go under our cloth forces here, forces and scene, let's add to the forces in simulation, press OK, and it should work. And let's try to uh, crank this up a bit, so 25, just to make sure we know it's working and hit simulate. And as you can see, you can tell it's pulling against it. It only pulls against it once, so it didn't keep flapping. So, well, let's see. You can see it is pulling. And if you really want to get to it, you just pull into it and it's kind of flat. Oh, it kind of flaps. But as you can see, it pulls into it and it keeps pulling. So what you can do is make two different uh, forces against it. So this one, turn on auto key, and at frame 10, frame 10, let's drop this down to 0 and pull the 0 frame, which is at 25, to 30. So it slowly gets windier over 30 frames. Um, now we will erase our simulation. So it starts off in the beginning again. Turn off auto key, go back to the beginning, and simulate. As you see, that one, and then this one should come in and push it again. But it really doesn't. So press play. It doesn't really push it in. What we can do is under F3, select our ball and make it much smaller. And erase our simulation. Now what this should do is not pressing play. We have to simulate it out again. I don't know why it was that silly. Simulate it out. And as you can see, it kind of pulls against it more because the ball is not big enough to uh, well, do anything against it. So we press play, 
Let me see if pulling against it more. Which looks kind of cool. Yeah, I like doing that. Whee! Alright, now I'll add a quick shell modifier to this. Another shell. Right there. And very slight. So, 0.125 on both sides. 0.125, it's just small. And then a turbo smooth. And you see, it's kind of like a nice looking whole cloth thing, but it's pulled. It's like a pillowcase, but then you're blowing at it. And it looks like a penguin or a dolphin. Yeah, it does look like a dolphin. And there's a bit of flipping underneath itself, but it's because we don't have self collision turned on, which I should have turned on. So let's go back to my cloth, racer simulation, go back to object properties, and did you actually, it's not under here. Close it out. And it's somewhere under here, self collision, right there. Turn that on. Uh, solid collision, yeah, that's good, that's good. So on render, yeah. Now let's hit simulate again. And as you can see, it slows down a lot because of self-collision, especially when this happens. But you can see the, sim the seals <laughs> seems pulled together, and that is one dolphin-looking creature there. Like, really dolphin-looking creature, which is kind of hilarious. Wee! Flap my wings for me! So, that is kind of the cloth modifier, and kind of its, uh... work. Wee! <laughs> it actually looks really good. I'm impressed by the cloth modifier. Um, yeah, I was gonna say something, but I don't remember what. And you can cache that, and you can load caches, but we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we can grab states and set initial states. Let's go back into our properties and see what we can play around with here. Let's see if we can have a ball come down and hit it. I think it's all the collision. So what we're gonna do? is go under our forces, go to sphere, and I put it up here, and let's see what happens when this does anything to it. Another key, and I got frame 100, actually no, frame 40, so I go straight through. We'll add the same, uh, this to the class my first, so go back to a class, to properties, add objects, and yeah, that's the only other one I've seen. Uh, I don't think that one, that force is acting on it. I really don't because I don't think I added it to it. Uh, and then we'll go collision object. That's okay. Okay, and then we'll have to erase the simulation, but that's good right now. Um, let's go back to here under class. Let's erase our simulation quickly. You can see our simulated frames go down to zero again. And uh, plus forces. Yeah, win two is not on. I knew that. So. Let's press play again, or let's simulate this out again. You can see pull against it. This is going to fall through it. That actually does fall very well. Pulls at the seams very nicely, and then that just blows at it when it speeds up. There it goes. It still looks like a freaking dolphin to me. That's some amazing, amazing. I don't know why I liked, uh, what's it called? The phys physics ones. The NVIDIA ones. Uh, I am an NVIDIA fan. Pull against it, pulls at the seams, and then poof! I really do like that. Whee! And you make some really cool things like clothes on a line, so. I'm trying to remember how, I won't, I don't know how to do that yet, I don't know how to attach it to nodes and everything, however I kind of wish I did right now, but I really do like the way this is looking. So, it's a short one, I'm sorry I'm really tired and everything, however, let's go quickly set up some materials for this so it looks pretty. I'm just going to drag all this stuff up a bit, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave that in there, and let's go into my materials, get materials up first, set up my rendering engine. This is, I know this, you've probably done this a lot before, you've seen my tutorials, however, this practice makes perfect on this. Sign renderer, false, or, uh, mental ray, there we go. False scale. <laughs> that's just ridiculous one. 
Uh, okay, so that's good for that. Uh, and we'll set it up to be HDTV. Oh, there you go, and we'll close it out. Now what we'll do is put material, array, architecture design, just a flat gray material. So zero reflective and glossiness. Put everything in scene. I can drop it on, assign it to selection, close that out. And let's put a sunlight in there. Daylight, yes. Drag it up. And you know me, just metal ray. And mental ray, yes. And now let's put a ground plane on this. Lay ground plane, up down a bit so the ball can hit it. Scale it up till you're happy with it. I can drop this in, and let's see how this looks for a rendered image. I want to hit F9. There we go. That's kind of a rendered image. It's very simple. This one isn't the best quality. But as I said, it's holy Jesus, 1030 tonight. Short tutorial. Um, yeah, hopefully next time I'll have like cloth on a bridge or something or cloth tearing to a cloth modifier. I know I did the one with uh, NVIDIA physics uh, things, but this is used in, able to be used in 2009, up, I think. I think the cloth was in there. But anyways, yeah, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.